All right, so quiet on the set. You should be used to that. Welcome, guys, to Miranda Detailing. So we are here at The Bays in Chicago. This is an incredible event, and I encourage you to check out all the other videos down below. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about polishing. And if you're a beginner polisher, this video is for you. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And check out, again, all of the other creators' videos down below and subscribe to their channel. So what we're working with today is DIY details. Now, you've seen me use these products on our channel, but today we have the guys with us. And also we have the lovely Amy Otterness here as well, and she's going to be our student. So we're gonna show her how to use a polisher, both a rotary and a DA. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so we are here with Ivan, with Nick. We got a whole crew here, and we're gonna be showing Amy how to basically handle a polisher. She's never handled a polisher before. We should ask her how she's feeling first. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good, a little nervous. I don't, I'm not gonna ruin my car, so I'm fine. Do you wanna work on your Tesla or Jason's Tesla instead? <laughs> yes, I don't like it. <laughs> this Let's was bring his the Tesla. Idea. Yeah, Jason exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm gonna ask you some of the questions about polishers. Which one should Amy pick up and start using first? Well, I like to use two different polishers. I like to use a dual action machine like this for cutting and I finish with a rotary, which is a little backwards for most, but you'll get it, you'll find out, and you'll probably end up loving the rotary a lot more than you like this. What are the differences between, I guess I don't even know what cutting means, to okay. be honest. So cutting is, we have deeper defects, we want to get those defects away. Then we have polishing, which is we want to bring up the highest gloss possible. We want to make it look shiny. So polishing is what makes it shiny. Right. Okay. So we're polishing or finishing with the rotary and we're cutting with the dual action. Now, your question is excellent. What's the difference? This one being a rotary, all it does is go around in a circle. Okay. That's it. Whereas the dual action machine, not only does it spin, but it has a little orbit. Right, it's so, moving around. Yeah, so it's going in a circle, but at the same time it's going back and forth. So this is a 15 millimeter orbit, meaning that that little orbital action is 15 millimeters or about uh, a little under uh, five eighths of an inch. Okay, this one would be easier. Correct. Because it's one <laughs> Yeah, motion. one direction. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yes. Most people are scared of that. Yes. The, the rotary? Yeah. Okay, that is a uh, great marketing myth that was brought on by many companies that came out with a DA. People have this innate fear that they bring this within about this distance of paint, it's gonna burn the paint off the car. And the way we used to reuse a rotary back in the 70s, back in the 80s, was we called it a high speed machine. Cause we were doing this. Like full speed, on an angle, with pressure. That's the way we used to use it. Now when we wanted to finish back then, we'd turn the speed down, we'd keep the pad flat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nobody ever saw that part of it. All they saw was the person doing this. We're not doing that anymore. First of all, we're dealing with clear coat. We're not dealing with lacquer-based paints anymore. Lacquer-based paints loved heat. Clear coat hates heat. It's afraid of it. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna help it. So we're trying to keep the surface cooler. Another in very important tool is right behind Amy, and that's a pad washer. So a pad washer has some liquid in it. It has some rinseless wash. It's gonna not only clean the pad, but we wanna prime the pad. So a lot of uh, detailers, they prime the pad by putting a lot of polish on it. Great if you're selling polish. If you like dust, it's a great way of doing that as well. Because you're, you're just putting so much polish on it that it's getting dust. But you never want to dry polish. Dry polish meaning I have a dry foam pad and if I put it on here, I actually scratch the surface. You can see, if you get close here, you right. can actually see scratches. Yep. So I actually scratched the surface using this. If we dampen the pad using a pad washer, I'm not going to do that. I'll get you to feel the firmness of the pad. So it's rather scratchy, it's firm. Yeah, very firm. Now feel it. No, it's soft, much softer, yes. So we've softened the pad, we now have it primed, so now I'm not gonna scratch anything. I'm actually gonna polish the paint using the pad. So we wanna get rid of these scratches that are here. For that, I'm gonna use a dual action machine. Because it's doing two things at once, it's more aggressive. And this is a wool pad. So we have a foam pad, which is designed for finishing, and we have a wool pad, which is designed for cutting. Okay. So it's designed for removing defects. It's gonna leave a nice finish anyways, but you're gonna better the finish with that. Okay. So always start with a damp pad, 
get the water out of that. We just want it damp, we don't want it wet. A little different is the polish is in a spray form. I'm gonna put the machine speed three roughly. Okay. Basically, as long as the low. backing plate is rotating, we don't need any more speed. Okay. Speed creates heat, heat is not our friend. Heat okay. is our enemy. You'll notice I've got a death grip on it. Not five, not doing this. As soon as you get a death grip on it, the machine is controlling you. I thought you had to hold it tight. That's no. why my arms would hurt if I ever tried. No, I'm lazy. That's why I didn't want yeah. to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your arms are not gonna hurt. One important, very important step when you're polishing on YouTube is to put the cord over your shoulder. Because okay. if you don't, we're gonna get those keyboard I'm gonna get warriors. lots of comments. Yeah, you're gonna get the comments. <laughs> but this is a test hood. There's no panels below, so we don't have to worry about the cord over the shoulder. Right. The other thing that manufacturers go out of their way to do, put this button, and that's a trigger lock. If you're holding on to the trigger, you're locking your wrist, mm -hmm. you're locking your elbow, you lose range of movement. By using the trigger lock, I can do this, and I have range of movement. It'll become kind of second nature. You'll do it, and you'll just click that button right in every single time. Yeah. You can put the cord over your shoulder if you'd like to be internet savvy. Just pull the trigger to start. You have to pull it in all the way. Yeah. Basically, you want to overlap. So, you can see that we see the width of the pad here. So you want to go half of the pad width up and half of the pad width again. You just guide in with that one finger. You're putting less stress on the machine, which is less stress on you. Great question, Chelsea. Yeah. How big of a space should people work? Yeah, I do go up and down, around, side to side. So you're gonna, your pad's going to be about here. So you're going to start here, overlap by 50, yeah. go up, overlap by 50, go up, yeah. and then that's one pass, right? Right, exactly. And then you go down, you can either go down yeah. and up. So. And basically this is a good, you know, people that want a visual image of how much size do I need, that's a good size. Now we have a method we call 555. The Rupe has, because it doesn't free spin, will modify it to 655. So speed six for five seconds in roughly five pounds of pressure. So this is the only place where we have to work. I'm gonna put pressure on the machine and you see I'm squeezing the pad. I'm just gonna pull the trigger. Yeah, but I stop before I create heat. So I'm not wanting to create heat. So if you feel the temperature difference between there and there, we went about 20 degrees warmer. Oh wow, yeah. But we don't want to go over overheated. So you clean the pad every time? Never put clean polish on a dirty pad. If this I don't think everybody does that. No, <laughs> nobody does. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you're just working, you just go at it. But right. yeah. this is best practice. Best practice, and also people need to slow down to speed up. Like you said, when he's working and he's in the zone, he, most people think they're going faster by not cleaning their pad but if they actually stop to clean the pad, it would be faster. If you take the time to clean your pad, cool your pad down, it's gonna cut faster, more efficiently, and do a better job. So you have yeah, less, right the first time. less chance of micro marring, et cetera. We have our friend, the Rotary. Detailers have been detailing for 15 years. They see this machine and their little kids going <gasps> uh, They're afraid of it. So we'll dampen our pad. While it's still turning slightly, we'll spray on our polish. So most detailers, they do three to four sprays, or three to four drops, dime size drops on their pad, right. right? This is how much polish one spray puts out. But most detailers would do right. this much. Right. So we're actually using a quarter of the polish that most people are using. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So the 16 ounce bottle is like 64 ounces of anybody else's. Again, using the trigger lock, same formation. So again, you know, I've got a lot of pressure on the machine. I'm holding it with a death grip. I'm using at least two fingers at the moment. So for a lot of detailers, this is the machine they're afraid of. They think that as soon as it touches paint, it's gonna, right. And they think that if I do this, so let's not move for a minute. Ready? It's a little warmer than that. Yeah. So Pretty much the same, just a little different. Yeah. Like the yeah. other one. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, we've polished with the rotary. And this is our dedicated rotary only. So the, the yellow pad can go on anything. 
So again, uh, it's really difficult to control the machine. Take it away. Now just use the one finger at the front. Oh. It's more fun. Yeah. Okay. And you see how even wiggle. you see how even these patterns are where you have all the circles. That's exactly what you want. Like you don't want you don't want it to, to go on side. Like, you yeah. just want the, the big flat. Circle. Yeah. yeah. So you can see the polish is starting to dry up. Yeah. So if the machine is starting to pull, you're done. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. This is fun. I don't know if I'd want to do a whole vehicle myself. But if you ever but you hit could. something and you need to remove the evidence before Jason comes home, now you know how right. to. Exactly. Yeah. Do the 555. Yeah. I did notice I um, put the garage door down on my new vehicle. Okay. I tried to hide it, but it didn't So work. you could get away with a little more now. <laughs> and that's enough polish? Yep. If you feel the machine is pulling you, you just need to adjust the angle yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we have an edge here, right? Yeah. Scary. We'll let the peak tank get really, really hot now. What is so the Phil is starting. Like Phil is starting to sweat now. I'm getting nervous. Yeah. So check the heat right on the right on the edge here. Are you gonna burn the paint? No, I'm not. Then why would Phil get nervous? Because every detailer thinks that you do this, you're gonna be burning paint. Okay. If you don't know what you're doing, right. yes. I don't understand. But check the warm. Yeah, the edge yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah, that's still very, very cool. Yeah. If you did that with a DA, it'd be much, much warmer. Much right. Warmer. With a DA would be burning through the paint. So okay. yeah. We don't have a light on it though. You know. Don't do that. It looks so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing is detailers get in our own way by putting lights on paint. Where you as a regular human who likes nice cars and shiny things, you're gonna see shiny paint, right? That's what this system can easily deliver. So here's another really cool exercise that I like to just teach students if they're having issues handling the polisher, is to learn how to trigger lock like like we showed you and um, putting it on a, a maybe speed three or speed four, and just with one hand, and this is just to get a feel for the polisher, trigger lock it, and just kind of try to bounce the machine and get a feel for it, because you'll get like a feel for the weight of the machine. Right. And then, if you just tilt it to the left, you'll see how it feels. Tilt it to the right, you'll see how it feels. Tilt it up, down, and you get a feel for it, and you're trying to balance it so that you get that spin. So if you're just holding it there like that and just keep it balanced and keeping it flat, it's like a good exercise to train your like micro muscles in your arms. Right. So if you're always going like this, obviously something is wrong. So just balance it out and you get that nice smooth feel. Both machines you can do that with. So just, just do that, get a feel for it. Trigger lock it and just do it one hand really nice and light and just get a feel for it and keep it steady. And then if you want, so this is a dual action. Yep, but it'll be it'll work the same way with the rotary. But now tilt it up slightly and feel it what it does. And you're like it doesn't feel right. Tilt it back down. Exactly, and get it balanced. So that's the feel that you want. But that's the feel that that you want. So when you're polishing and you feel the polisher slightly change and you're not getting that rotation, you instantly realize and know like, "Oh, I need to balance back out and make those little micro adjustments to make sure that you get that that pad spinning properly. So yeah. it's just a good exercise, I feel, to yeah, definitely. feel the yeah. polisher and what it's doing. And with the rotary, it's the same thing. Yep. The rotary, if you lift up the back end, it wants to go this way. Yep. If you drop the back end, it wants to go that way. So once you find that neutral spot, yeah. you can stay there all day long if you want. Yeah. You'll find that sweet spot, that balance with each polisher. And you, you feel it. And even going over a body line, once you have that balance, it's easy to maintain. Yeah. What do you do on the edges? Excellent question. That's a great question. Yeah, so on the rotary here, we have this little line that's telling us it's turning that way. Okay. So going over the edge, you want to bring the pad over the edge. Okay. 
So you're working off the edge. So you don't have to tilt it anyway, you just keep going straight. Yeah. Okay. But if I were to do this, see how it, right. if I press down, it wants to go off. Okay. If I lift up, it wants to go this way. So by keeping it balanced, it's going a little bit off the edge. I'm not going to wear the edge down. We, we already established that we're, we're glossing the paint. We're not cutting. We're not yeah. removing anything with this. We're just making it better. Right. And that just comes with experience. You'll learn how to work those edges. You'll learn how to work yeah. these little edges. It just comes with experience. Yeah. But you'll get a feel for it. Yeah. I think you're getting the hang of it. Yeah. Really, really nice form. And, and how do you feel with polishers now? It's not rocket science. I know, right? You don't have to be so afraid of them. The only thing I would probably thank God for YouTube and you guys is what pad to use for what. Like, yeah, just yeah, that's, that's true. That's a whole different... There's so many ballgame. different There's ones. So many. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing is keeping it simple. DIY Details has that nice, simple um, formulation. Using their pads, using the DIY Gold Standard Polish, it's very simple. I would start yeah. with that. If you're a beginner polisher... Like where would you start? Like someone like, I don't want to buy 20 pads. Exactly. To do one car. Yeah. Exactly. Or start. Two polishers. They're expensive. They exactly. Are, yeah. So yeah. if you, what, in, what would you use if you could just afford one? Personally, I'd use a rotary, but that's me. Uh, so everyone's for, kind of different. For most people, mm -hmm. this machine, a 15 millimeter, is the good in between. A 21 millimeter will have a lot more cut. So if you're looking for aggressive cutting action, the 21 millimeter is the way to go. If you're looking for fine finishing, the 21 isn't there. Does so it matter the, the color of the car? No. Yeah. So it's all the same. We're working with a clear coat. We're not working with the paint. Okay. Correct. Now, the color of paint will show defects differently. So a white car can be all scratched up and no one sees it. Right. A black car, you breathe on it the wrong way and it looks bad. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why you have a white car. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That's why we have a white car. <laughs> yeah. The detailers would choose white cars, but I even prefer black. Of course. It's about thinking less critically <laughs> about it and going for shiny paint. And for everyday people out there, it's just, it's okay to have a few scratches deep, deep down that we have to wet sand, but you have shiny paint, right? From five feet away, no one else is gonna notice them except for us detailers. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's why you've had shiny paint on black cars for 20 years? 30. 30? Yeah. yeah. I still would never wear a black car, but it's a <laughs> We've lifestyle. had black cars, yeah, we're, we're done ourselves. Yeah, you know? well, yeah. You know, white car is a one night stand, a black car is a wedding. <laughs> nice analogy. You need to maintain it, you yeah. need to keep up with it. You need to communicate all that. A white car, eh, it's fine. Yep. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, I think I think we learned a lot here. Um, so I, I want to thank Ivan and Nick for being here, and, and Chelsea for our backup, <laughs> and uh, and thank you, Amy, for no, volunteering no, and doing this. Yeah. I think you did an awesome job. What do you think, guys? Excellent. Last nice question: How do you feel now compared to how you felt before? I'm still probably not going to do my own car, but now I know I could maybe do a section. <laughs> yeah. Look what but, you did here. You can remove all these scratches. It is a lot of work. Like I give yeah. detailers credit. Like it's a lot of time and work and energy to to keep up with that. Yeah. But did it feel good? Like being able to see It's it a lot lighter than I thought. I thought everything was going to be super heavy and I'd have to like really grind. Yeah. 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 So that was that was the difference. I didn't you know, yeah, technology and polishers have come a long way. Too, no, but you didn't, you didn't screw it up, and you I didn't screw you it have up. a great end result. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys for Thank having you. me. Thank you. So yeah, guys, if you are interested in the DIY Gold Standard Polish, their pads, check out some of the links down below. We'll have them down there. Don't forget to use code Miranda10. You'll get 10% off at Car Supplies Warehouse. And again, don't forget to check out all the other creators down below. I'll have uh, links to all of their channels. Go and support them. Go and subscribe to them. These videos are going to be all over the place on YouTube here. Tons of how-tos, tutorials, podcasts, and more. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And we'll see you guys next time. That's a wrap. Thank you.